Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So a couple days ago, posted this video begging the question, is overclocking on the CPU even worth it anymore? Now, in that video, I referenced two benchmarks from TechSpot that was done the same day, where they used the Core i7-8700 with 2666 memory versus the Core i5-8400 with similar memory configuration. In these tests, they were basically comparing the B360 and 370 motherboards, comparing them against each other. But the big thing that I noticed was the performance between the two CPUs was very minimal in both Battlefield 1 and in Far Cry 5. Meanwhile, the power consumption difference was massively different. Now, unfortunately, I don't have an i5-8400, nor an i7-8700, or an 8700K. But I do know somebody who does. So I reached out to Steve over at Hardware Unboxed to see if he was working on something kind of similar to what I had in mind. And luckily, Steve was doing a bunch of benchmarks, and he was nice enough to provide us here at The Good Old Gamer with some benchmark numbers. I was interested to see the 8700K maximum overclocked with a GTX 1080 Ti with fast RAM running at 1080p versus an i5-8400. Basically putting the worst case scenario onto the i5-8400. And the benchmarks that he sent over were very, very interesting. But before we get to that, if you guys haven't checked out Hardware Unboxed, the link will be in the description below. I strongly recommend checking these guys out. I reference Steve, his numbers all the time, and it's because I very much trust the accuracy of those numbers. So if you guys haven't subscribed, you should definitely check them out and thank them for sending these numbers over to us to check out here today. So we're going to start off with the outlier, and that is Ashes of the Singularity. As you can see here, we're looking at an i5-8700K at 5.2 gigahertz using 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3600 megahertz memory, as well as a Core i5-8400 just using 3200 megahertz memory on a Z370 platform, and the Core i5-8400 running at the stock 2666 on the cheapest B360 motherboard Steve could get his hands on. Now, it was nice to include the faster RAM on the 8400 to see if memory limitations are actually a factor. Here on Ashes of the Singularity, we do see a massive difference between the 8700 at 5.2 gigahertz and the i5-8400. We're going to basically just be looking at the stock standard 2666 numbers here. We see a whopping 45% increase on the average frame rate and a massive 37% increase on the minimum frame rate. Going from the stock standard to the 3200 megahertz memory, we see a 7% increase in average and an 11% increase on the minimum. But remember that this benchmark is the outlier, and this is probably the absolute best case scenario you will ever see out of the 5.2 gigahertz i7-8700. Moving on to Assassin's Creed Origins, we see the i7-8700 has a 4% lead on average and a 7% lead on the minimum frame per second. Now, the 3200 megahertz memory has a 4% average lead as well over the B360 setup and a 3% on the minimums. This right here is obviously a much tighter race. So we're going to go ahead and check out Battlefield 1 once again. We see the i7 has an 11% lead on average frame rate, but it does have a 31% lead on the 1% minimums. So this is actually pretty solid. That is a pretty good increase. Going from the stock B360 to the 3200 megahertz, we do see a 6% increase on both average and minimum frame per second. So not a huge jump there. Overall, this is a pretty good showing for the i7. Checking out Far Cry 5 once again here, we see at 144 frames per second, the i7 takes a pretty big lead over the 121 on the stock standard B360, and that comes out to being a 19% increase. Now, on the 1% lows, we see 107 on the i7 versus 98 on the i5, and that comes out to being just a 9% increase. The difference between 125 and 121 comes out to a measly 3%, and then we see 8% though on the minimum 1% low 
uh, between the 3200 megahertz and the 2666. Moving on over to Overwatch, we see the i7 pushing 230 frame per second average versus 221 on the i5-8400, bringing us to only 4% difference. 205 on the 1% low versus 185, and that's good for an 11% increase. So there's a little bit to be gained there. The difference between the two memory timings, we have 226 on the 3200 versus 221 which is good for only 2%, and then we have 204 on the minimum FPS versus 185, and that is good for 10%. So it's very clear to see that the memory increase here is actually more beneficial than the clock speed increase, as the minimum frame per second on 3200 is almost the same as the overclocked i7. Now this is the final benchmark that Steve sent over for us to check out here today, and this is on Warhammer Vermintide 2, we see the i7 at 148 frames per second versus 144. That's good for only 3% difference. On the 1% low, we see 114 as compares to 101, and that is good for 13% increase there. Now, comparing the 3200 to the stock B360, we see 2% average difference on the average FPS, and then we see 8% difference on the 1% low showing that the memory speed almost balances out the average frame per second between the 5.2 gigahertz and the stock standard i5 8400 with 3200 megahertz memory. All right, and finally, let's check out the power consumption. Now, Steve had blender numbers. I said that would be just fine. So this is when the CPU is mostly utilized. This is not gaming power consumption as the GPU should draw virtually identical between the two as they run almost the same speeds. We see the overclocked 5.2 gigahertz i7-8700 is drawing 262 watts, that's total system power. And that's in comparison to only 94 watts on the B360 i5-8400. Now after taking all these numbers into account, I came up with the averages across all tests. The i7 5.2 gigahertz 8700K on average frames per second came up to being only 14.3% faster and 18% faster on the 1% low. So it did better on minimum frames per second, which that's not too bad at all. Just bumping from the B360 to the Z370 and 3200 megahertz memory, however, gives us a 4% increase in overall average frames per second and 7.7% increase on the minimum. So if we take that 18% minimum that we had on the i7-8700 and attribute 7.5%, 7.7% of that is due to the fact that it's just memory speeds, that brings the difference between the memory speed increase by itself, that brings the 8700K down to only 10% faster on average frames per second and 10.3% faster on the 1% low. And if we go one step further and eliminate the outlier, which is Ashes of the Singularity, where we saw massive performance differences, that brings the 5.2 gigahertz 8700K down to only 8.2% faster on average and 14.2% faster on the 1% low. And that's not discounting that memory percentage decrease. So it's even less than that using the i5-8400 with faster memory. Now looking at the two platforms side by side, the basic components for an i5-8400, the CPU, memory, and motherboard will run about $414 with today's pricing. The i7-8700K here in the US would run about $665. What this comes out to being is you end up paying 60.6% .6 more money for the 8700K. And as I just said, at no point are you gaining 60.6% .6 performance anywhere. Well, already guys, that is a lot of data that I just threw at you. Okay, so overall what we're seeing is approximately a 10 to 15% increase on the i7 at 5.2 gigahertz over the 3.8 gigahertz on the i5-8400. That's right, with all core turbo on the i5-8400, that CPU runs at 3.8 gigahertz. And all the while drawing 2.78 times more power. So overall, this really solidifies what I was trying to go over in that video. I'm really thankful for Steve for sending these benchmarks and power targets over 
So you guys can see what it was that I was trying to get across in that last video now. It's not worth all the 60% more money and two and a half to three times as much power to gain 10 to maybe 15% more performance. It just isn't realistically worth it in today's environment. And that's both a good thing. That means you can go out and you can buy the cheapest B360 motherboard for an Intel platform and a $180 CPU, and you can compete with the best that Intel has to offer. But for the general gamers out there, there's simply no need for you to spend all that extra money on hardware, all that extra time tweaking, and spending all that extra money on power because you're literally cutting your power consumption in more than half. So it's about 30% of what it would be uh, with such a high overclock. So you're saving money every time you turn the computer on by going ahead and getting yourself a more affordable CPU. Now, that extra money that you're saving, that can go towards buying a more powerful graphics card. The reason why I asked Steve to use the 1080 Ti at 1080p was to eliminate as much of the CPU or GPU limitations as possible. Now, if we look at the figures from Ashes of the Singularity, we saw about a 30% uptick. Um, that's under the absolute best case scenario where you would see your performance gained. But once again, even if you were getting 30% faster performance instead of 10, which like I said, that can be mitigated a lot just from the RAM. But regardless, if even if you were getting 30%, you're still paying 60% more and drawing nearly three times as much power. Now, of course, power users and everybody else out there, you have different requirements and you, you know what to buy for yourself. I'm talking to the general gamer out there who just wants to pick something up, throw a video card in there, and they want to get the best performance per dollar. And right now that happens to be the i5-8400 from Intel or something like the 1600 or 1600X from AMD. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Once again, if you haven't checked out Steve over at Hardware Unboxed, check the link in the description below. Go send him a special thank you. This was something that he didn't have to do, and I really, really appreciate him taking the time doing this for us. But alrighty, guys, that's all I have for today. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. And I will catch you guys in the next video.